Hi there, it's uh, Stephen Ball here and I just want to take you through a little bit about how you can get your screenshots sorted out quite quickly for your applications to go into the App Store. Now when you're submitting an app in, uh, depending on the form factors you're using, you'll need to generate typically two, three sets or four actually sets of different images. So the first one's for an iPhone 6.7 inch display. Now that's the, the current uh, iPhones. Uh, you also need a slightly older iPhone 5.5 uh, inch display to get some screenshots. Now, rather than having a, a draw of doom uh, with all these technical devices that are lying to waste, um, you can actually just uh, use uh, a Mac and the simulator to generate the screenshots quite quickly. So to do that with Radio Studio, you need a, an ARM-based Mac, so an M1, M2, and the simulator running on it. And you'll also need the correct simulators and um, different screen devices um, to deploy into. So I'm just going to run you through what I had to do to get these screenshots created quickly and uh, and take you through kind of how how to get that set up. Uh, also just to mention as well for the iPad you do need to have two sets one's the sixth gen and the other one's the second gen. Um, these are slightly different resolution sizes uh, and again you can generate the screenshots from the simulator quite quickly um, to put in there. A little bit quicker and easier than uh, opening up uh, <laughs> images and setting the resize automatically, um, which can also work. So right, let's go and have a look at how I've got these images sorted. So I have been developing here with Rad Studio. I've got my app all set up and you can see here all the simulators and these are connected up to a Mac in cloud. So within here, we can edit the connection that we are working with. I've got my local Mac um, where I've got an Intel based machine and I've also connected up to this Mac in cloud instance to uh, run and test out to. So this is a temporary instance so it'll be gone by the time you see this uh, video but uh, here this is a very very quick way to connect up and to just deploy the app up to the simulator to generate the images that you need. Let's jump to the Mac in cloud. So here's my Mac, here's my simulator. Um, I've got PA server here. So first and foremost, on your local machine where you've installed Rad Studio, if you go and have a look in the install folder, and uh, let's go and have a look in C program files, Embarcadero, Studio, the latest version, and then go to PA server. Here you'll find the PA server um, package for the version that you're running. If you just drag this onto your desktop, um, once you've got it on your desktop, then you can just drag it straight up onto this uh, Mac instance. Now I'm running, connecting to a Mac using a Mac, so I'm using uh, screen sharing. If you're using a Windows machine, you can still connect up to Mac in Cloud, um, but you'll need to use a different application. It's not quite the same protocol as um, terminal services. Um, but uh, you know, there's great documentation on the Mac in Cloud website about an app that you can uh, buy to, to, to do that. Uh, I'm sure there might be some free options as well. And the other thing, there is a, an emergency console that you can use with Mac in Cloud. Um, so that might be another option uh, just to kind of get you on quickly and maybe you know, enable VNC or something. So PA server, get that up. Open, you know, double click on it, run it, install, uh, and then you can just start a PA server quite quickly as you would on uh, any machine here. So let's just go PA server, uh, launch it, set the password that I want, uh, and get that running. So PA server's running. Uh, let's find out about how we got the Mac in Cloud instance running, because um, that's the other thing that's quite important. So I've logged into myflow.swiss, um, which is a Mac in Cloud provider. Um, I've used the wizard to create a bare metal device. Um, I use the M2 Pro because it's the cheapest available option. And uh, with that instance set up, um, the one thing I needed to do is just go to security groups on the networking side. Uh, and in here, just add in a new port 64211 for PA server. Now that allows me to then connect up using PA server to the remote machine. So with the machine set up and PA server installed, uh, I'm then able to test my connection, which works from here brilliantly. Um, now, 
the first time I ran this through, uh, it didn't do anything. Uh, I had to come up to the Mac. I needed to make sure I went into the App Store, registered, downloaded Xcode, got that installed. And um, once you've got Xcode uh, installed, let's just launch Xcode here quickly. Uh, once I've got Xcode installed, I need to come into the devices and simulators. And in here, you can add in additional devices. Now, if you choose a device and there's no OS version available for it, what I suggest you do is click the OS version and go download more simulators and runtimes. If you choose iOS 15.5, that seems to be a good one to, to pull in all the others that are required. And it'll duplicate in any devices that it, it wants. It might add a few additional ones as well that weren't there before. Um, but what you might need to do is just come back into here, go select the physical device you want, like the iPhone 8 Plus, uh, which originally didn't show up for me, and then choose the OS version. Once you've done that, give it a name uh, and then save it. You know, I've already created mine, uh, my iPhone 8 Plus, and uh, that's here. Um, once you've created the device into the list of simulators, if you come down here, uh, you can refresh your target and that will reload this list and you can see here the different OS simulators and iOS versions that you can target directly from Bad Studio then. So I'm going to go ahead, I want to use the iPhone 8 Plus which is the, the one that I've just created. Um, to generate the larger images um, you can use the iPhone 15 Pro Plus, uh, Max. Um, you can Google and it'll tell you which devices to use and get the right screen sizes. But uh, the iPhone 8 Plus ones are good, a good one to run with for the smaller screens. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max is currently great for the larger ones. So once that's there, um, we have got the target platform selected. You, know, you might need to just come and double click it to select the right one if you need to change it around. And first time you run it, it'll download all the SDK. Um, I'm just going to hit run now because I've already done that and it will go, oh, I've already got the SDK locally harvested so I can do all the building and the packaging and everything ready to push this up and it will then go ahead and run this to the simulator. Now if you run this over the local network this takes a few seconds to pick up and run. Obviously when you're building and deploying over a wide network um, to a remote machine in the cloud somewhere and this can take a little bit longer. Um, so I'm just going to speed this up and you'll see as soon as it's ready that we get a message that it is deployed. Oh, no need to speed it up, we're there, brilliant. Okay, so let's jump back over to the Mac. Here we can see my iOS device running. Now it looks a little bit blurry because it's running through a cloud, this is a remote desktop. Um, but if you take a screenshot here, the image that you generate is crystal clear and it's the right resolution and size. So you can go ahead now and you can just run through your application, grab your screenshots that you want, once you've got your screenshots um, created, um, they're just automatically put on the, the desktop here. Uh, you can literally just drag them and drop them back onto your machine. Uh, and then you can then go ahead, return to your App Store page and just drag them on and they'll load automatically in. Uh, if you've got the wrong screen size, it'll tell you. Um, but uh, yeah, this is great. Come in here, view all sizes in media. Uh, and then you can see the additional sizes that are required and it will automatically provision based on the, the larger size down to the smaller ones. Um, for the iPad, again, you just need to get the two uh, different versions for the the 12.9 for the 6th gen and also the 2nd gen. Um, slightly different devices and screen orientations. So again, uh, just using the uh, the simulator, you'll, you'll be good to go. So that is it. That's Mac in Cloud with my PA server set up, enabled, um, being able to pull it down directly from Brad Studio to do all the, the screenshots, getting ready to push out to the store. Now, if you're looking at doing Android, um, the easiest thing I've found uh, is to actually run out onto an Android device that you've got. Um, there are simulators that you could you know, connect up and run across to, um, but uh, I preferred running out onto my actual phone. And then just using the phone, you can push the uh, uh, I think it's normally the power button and the down volume to take a screenshot and uh, I then just go into photos and just move those images across into uh, the camera folder and then I can drag them straight down from Google Drive 
uh, and load them in. So that's that's another approach. Uh, obviously with the iOS, um, there's quite a lot of screen resolutions you need to put in to get it submitted. So it takes a little bit longer and Mac in Cloud is a very, yeah, very good option for that. Um, you know, just to finish off, one thing I really want to kind of give a quick shout out to, because this is the, the most time consuming part sometimes of getting an app into the store is putting all the screenshots and everything together. The other part is the icon generation. Now, uh, within the project options on 12 and above, the new icon generator is an absolute time saver. Um, so if you come into the project options and go to the icons, you can select, uh, and what I do is do it on the all configurations, select the device that you want, use the art generator. Now you can either load up an, an image that's gonna be used to generate the icon, or you can just put in some text uh, and it will generate it based on the text. Uh, I've gone for the text approach on this one. Um, it suited me for, for my usage. Um, but if you do that for iOS, then do the same for Mac and for Windows and, and Android, you'll get a set of icons generated up with all the artwork and everything at the right sizes very, very quickly. Um, and that's a, an absolutely fantastic way to, to get up and speed up your app deployment and to make it look great. So happy coding, everyone. I hope you have great fun getting your apps submitted up to the App Store on the latest versions of Rad Studio. And um, chat to you soon.